Hello, my name is Mike. We're going to discuss in this recording IPv6 configuration workflow on a Cisco Catalyst wireless controller release 16.10. As you may know, there are many IPv6 features available on existing legacy ARS controllers. The same features are now ported into new Cisco wireless controller. And among those features are IPv6 client mobility, IPv6 RA guard, IPv6 DHCP guard, source guard, array throttling, array suppression. As you can see in this table, many other features that are supported now on ARS controller and on CWC controller release 16.10. As you may know, Cisco wireless controllers support two modes of IPv6 configuration. We can basically break it down into wireless client support and also IPv6 infrastructure support. As you can see on this diagram, we're showing what's the minimum requirements on the Cisco wireless controller to support IPv6 client. Either they are single mode, IPv4, or IPv6, or dual mode client. In most cases, networks support both IPv6 or IPv4 addresses, and therefore, uh, wireless controllers needs to support dual stack. Same time, when we have client configuration on the CWC controller, we need to support features such as ability to support dual client, native IPv6 client, we need to suppress array on a management interface, or throttle arrays on a client WLAN. Uh, first step would be to configure VL CLI a management VLAN and assign IPv4 and IPv6 address to it. So in our case shown in this uh, slide both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses uh, assigned and configured to the management and step two would be from CLI to issue a CLI command that will suppress RA traffic on a management interface. In our case as you can see on the right side we have interface with VLAN 42 and we're suppressing all the IPv6 arrays on that management interface. At the same time all the arrays are uh, available and should be not suppressed on the client VLAN. Step number three as we discussed uh, in the previous uh, slide we can configure IPv4 and IPv6 addresses on a VLAN interface or management interface. As you can see we're doing it by configuring VLAN marked with uh, number two and then when you configure VLAN and you add it in general tab you'll see that you have options to configure IPv4 and IPv6 or only IPv4 or only IPv6. For the purposes of this slide we have both IPv6 and IPv4 addresses uh, chosen to configure and as you can see under number six IPv6 address has been configured on that uh, VLAN 42 which is a management interface. Next step in configuring IPv6 on the Cisco wireless controller would be configuring IPv6 static or default trial. This is very important step and to make sure that wireless client traffic has only one default route in a pure IPv6 deployment. This uh, configuration is done via CLI command and to get to CLI configuration you can choose under administration tab command line interface and enter the command for the default or static crowd. Next step, step number five in configuring Cisco Catalyst wireless controller would be configuring authentication and authorization servers with IPv6 addresses. So we start this process by choosing AAA as shown on the right hand side screen. Choose AAA from the menu, go to configuration and is showing in number two authentication and authorization accounting. Pick that menu from the screen and then configure the AAA radio server as shown on the screen with IPv6 address. On the same screen if you you see under step number four you can also configure under radio step so it's shown in step number five you can configure IPv6 and IPv4 addresses for AAA TCAC server and as shown in step number six you can configure also LDAP server with IPv6 and last step number six for configuring uh, IPv6 workflow on the CWC would be configuring the array throttle policy on the client VLAN. We start that configuration by going to the RA throttle policy as shown on the right hand side global menu. Choose configuration step and then pick tab RA throttle policy. Under RA throttle policy you can choose the name for the RA policy. We in our case use it uh, RA throttle as a name and you choose also medium type. In our case we choose a Wi-Fi as a medium. This will configure the RA 
throttling policy on a client VLAN. The following steps would be configuring IPv6 wireless infrastructure configuration workflow on the Cisco Catalyst wireless controllers. In these steps, we configure support for preferred IPv4 or IPv6 dual stack mode APs. We can configure HA mode for primary, secondary, and tertiary controller. We can configure IPv6 mobility peers and GIS network. We can configure support for IPv6 multicast and IPv6 media streams, support for TFTP, FTP, NTP, DNS, and SNMP servers and also we'll show you how to use IPv6 ping and trace route support on SIP on the CWC controllers. In step number one, you will see how to configure preferred mode for AP join profile with IPv6 addresses. This mode is required only for the pure IPv6 deployment when you want AP to join controller with CapWap IPv6 or if you want to keep them with CapWap IPv4 addresses. For this step to configure, you choose on the right hand side AP join tab then you go to configuration and then under step number two choose ap joint profile tab choose your profile if you have one created in our case we choose default ap profile then go to step number four choose cap web advanced and then as you can see in preferred mode we configure ipv6 address for ap to join the controller then if you can go to monitoring step 7 and look under AP statistic join statistics you can also see in that screen all the APs that join the controller and here you can see what AP joined the controller with IPv4 or what APs join the controller with the IPv6 address. You can verify the same step as above from the CLI command. As you can see from CLI command you can issue commands such as show AP profile and the name of the profile detail and you will see also shown in this screenshot the way the AP are joining the controller. So as you can see what's highlighted there is preferred mode and you can see that that specific AP join controller in IPv6 mode. And also if you issue command like show AP summary you can also see there the IP address and you can see that AP that has IPv6 address or IPv4 address and you know how the AP will join the controller in under global configuration mode. Step number two in configuring global parameters for IPv6 pure deployment is configuring CapWap HA primary secondary with IPv6 apps. So you do this step by is shown again on the right hand side global menu AP join go configuration then you go to AP join profile then showing the number three choose cap web and then number four high availability and under high availability tab you can configure primary controller IPv4 or IPv6 address and you can configure secondary controller again there with IPv4 and IPv6 addresses so again in our case we will configure IPv6 addresses to join controller as a primary or secondary in IPv6 mode. Step number three in configuring IPv6 con configuration for infrastructure would be configuring AP slash IPv6 address. As you can see on the right hand side menu, again you choose access point, then go to configuration, access points, and then under number three you choose specific access point you want to configure with IPv6 slack address. Go to number four, general tab, and you can see in number five steps you can configure configure IPv6 Slack address for AP. In next step, number four, we'll show you how to configure mobility peers for the controller in case you want to configure anchor in foreign controller just in like an ARS infrastructure. And you can configure also multicast with IPv6 address in this step as well. So we'll go to mobility as shown on the right hand side global menu. Choose configuration, then wireless mobility. Number three shows you tab peer configuration. In this configuration, you can configure IPv6 addresses for the mobility controllers. Also, if you can see under step number four and five, you can configure under the same tab wireless mobility, going to global configuration, you can configure multicast IPv6 address under as shown in step number five. In step number five, we are showing you how to configure a CapWeb IPv6 multicast group address. Again, go to the right hand side menu. As you can see, you choose multicast from the global menu. Then you go to configuration. In number two, we're showing tab, choose multicast. And then under three, you choose AP CapWeb IPv6 multicast group address. And here you configure AP CAPF multicast IPv6 address is shown. 
In step number six, we configure IPv6 inbound and outbound ACLs on the management VLAN. This step also requires for the pure IPv6 deployments with IPv6 ACLs. To do that, go to the VLAN as shown on the global menu, choose configuration, then VLAN is step number two, then SVI, and then choose your management VLAN as shown under step number four. You choose advanced tab, and then as shown in step number five, you configure IPv6 inbound ACL, and IPv6 outbound ACL. Configure IPv6 inbound and outbound ACLs as shown in this example. In step number seven, we will configure IPv6 standard ACLs. Again, this step is required for IPv6 deployments with client VLAN ACL. So we go to ACL menu in the global configuration menu, choose access control list. Under number three, you choose specific ACL that you want to configure. Then you go to step number four, you choose IPv6 ACL type. And here you configure IPv6 standard ACL as you wish to configure for a specific deployment. In the next several steps, we will show you some additional optional parameters that you configure for IPv6 infrastructure workflow. In this example, we're configuring IPv6 CMX cloud services. Uh, again, you go to the global menu as shown on the right-hand side, choose cloud services, then configuration in step number two, cloud services. Then you choose CMX cloud under step number three, and then you go to HTTP proxy hostname IP. And here you configure CMX cloud HTTP proxy IPv6 address as shown in the example. In this next step, we'll show you how to configure media stream with IPv6 addresses. For that, you would go to global menu, choose media stream, then under configuration option, you choose tab media stream, and under number three step, choose streams. Choose media stream. Here you can configure multicast destination start, IPv4 or IPv6 address and multicast destination and IPv4 or IPv6 address. Figure media stream multicast destination start and end IPv6 addresses as shown in this example. In this next step, uh, you, you will see how to configure TFTP, FTP and system log servers with IPv6 addresses. Here this step is required for pure IPv6 deployment. So to configure this step, you go on a global menu to AP join, choose option for configuration, AP join profile, then you choose the specific AP joint profile. You go to step four, pick management. Then under step six, you configure TFTP downgrade IPv4 or IPv6 address for the TFTP server. As you can see under number seven, you configure system log servers with IPv6 addresses as shown in the example. On the same screen, you can see you can configure also Telonet, SSH, and Telonet addresses with IPv6 addresses. Next, we will show you how to configure controller SNMP IPv6 address. In this step only requires for the pure IPv6 deployments when configuration for SNMP server with IPv6 address is required. You go to global menu, you choose tab SNMP, then you go to administration of SNMP as shown tab number two, and then number three under tab host, you choose to configure the SNMP server. You can add SNMP server with either IPv4 or IPv6 address as shown in the example. This next screen will show you how to configure source IPv6 address for the software upgrade server. Again, this is an optional step. You can choose software update from the global menu then you go to administration choose tab software upgrade and here you enter the source IP address for the software upgrade servers next in this step you will see how to configure IPv6 address for DNS server an optional step for the pure IPv6 deployment uh, you can do it by going to the global menu as shown on the right hand side choose DNS then you choose administration tab choose tab DNS as shown in number two and then enter the IP IPv6 address for the DNS server as shown as an example. To configure NTP server with IPv6 address for pure IPv6 deployment, you go to the global menu and choose option with tab time. Go to administration, then choose under number two tab time. Then you choose under show numbers three NTP and here enter IPv6 address for the NTP server as shown in the example. And lastly, we will show you some troubleshooting options for CWC controller as shown on the screen. If you go to troubleshooting tab as shown on the right hand side, you can see that there are options to ping a trace route, audit support, web server logs, debug bundles, packet capture, syslog, 
and core dump. So in this case, we're going to show you how to do a simple ping and trace route. You'll go to troubleshoot, choose the tab, troubleshoot ping and trace route. Then under step number three, choose ping and ping IPv6 address from CWC controller. Any IPv6 address client or any other known IPv6 address. As you can see on the screen, it will show you in green a check mark when ping is successful, or it will be red if unsuccessful ping. Same thing you can do by trace route choosing on the screen, and it will show you a trace route from the CMC to a specific IPv6 address.